make some cold brew. Um, so let me show you what we need basically to make some easy cold brew at home. Um, I like to use a mason jar. This is about a 48 ounce uh, mason jar, I believe. Um, I think they make these in up to a gallon size, which would be cool, a gallon glass jar. But this is pretty good, 48 ounces. Um, and then what we're gonna do is you just want some good coffee, like, oh, I don't know, Numa coffee? Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Numa coffee, and you know, what's what happens in the cold brewing process is you get less acidity um, because you're not brewing at a high temperature at the usual 200, 205 degrees. Um, you're not dissolving everything that you normally would when you brew coffee. Um, and so it ends up being less, kind of less tart, less tangy, more chocolatey, smooth, caramel notes, things like that. Um, so you can really take any kind of coffee and turn that into a cold brew. You'll certainly find that some perform better as cold brew than others. Um, I like something with some acidity that even through the cold brew process, it's going to come out with a little bit of little bit of just fruit um, tanginess. So the Ethiopia that has a slight kind of blueberry note to it, uh, I think makes a great cold brew. Um, uh, we've also used the Guatemala uh, as cold brew. It's terrific. Um, typically in our shop, we do a cold brew that's based on our house blend. And so it's a blend of Brazil, Sumatra, and Ethiopia. And that's that turns out real, really good. The Sumatra adds a nice extra earthy smoky note to the chocolate kind of that comes through so anyway all kinds of crazy coffee roaster nerd talk about coffee but basically here's the deal take a jar grind some coffee put it in there add your filtered water stick it in the fridge overnight the next day you're going to pour that into the filter okay so how much coffee do you need that's a question i often get um, when it comes to cold brew so <clears throat> typical ratio uh, when you're brewing coffee is like a 16 to 1 ratio. That means one gram of water per 16 grams of coffee. Now, for those of you who just measure coffee in scoops and ounces and stuff like that, um, basically you've got, I think, about 28 grams uh, in one ounce. So that means basically 48 ounces of water. You're going to need, typically for normal brewing ratio, you would need about... Let's say it's 50 ounces, that's going to be 90 to 100 grams, um, which is what, three to three and a half ounces of coffee. And whatever that translates into scoops, ask your phone how many scoops, how many tablespoons is in, blah, 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 and help you convert those, convert those numbers. Um, but basically, I want f about 48 ounces of coffee, so I'm, I like to double, the, here's the easy way, the cheat way I do. Whatever, out, whatever volume I want to brew in coffee, I double that in grams. So 48 ounces, that's 96 grams of coffee. Now that's a normal brew ratio. With cold brew, you want to add about 50% to that. Some people go as much as doubling that. I would say 50%. So we're going to go, I'm going to do 150 grams of co ground coffee, coarsely ground coffee, uh, with this water in the jar. Okay, so I got my little scale little cup we'll just pour some beans in here measure this out that's beautiful I finished that bag off 148 grams uh, perfect so I'm gonna dump this in the grinder and for cold brew, you can go anywhere from just sort of the medium grind setting that you would normally use for drip coffee, go all the way to as coarse as you would for a French press. Usually on a grinder like this, that's as coarse as it'll go. Now, if you have a blade grinder, this is going to be very tricky. You need to get a burr grinder, okay? Stop chopping your beans. You need to grind your beans, all right? Um, <clears throat> if you don't have a burr grinder, then... Um, ask a friend to grind this coffee for you so you get consistent particle sizes because cold brew if you use a blade grinder you're going to get a lot of powdery mess big chunks and little powdery pieces and it's not going to extract properly um, or just get it ground you know at your local coffee shop wherever you're buying coffee ask them to grind it for you on the course i would say don't go to the absolute coarsest setting 
um, on this bun grinder. Coarse is the far left setting. I'm going to go one more that says regular percolator. Um, that's the setting I'm going to use on this bun grinder. Okay. There we go. About 150 grams of freshly ground Ethiopian Yerga Chefe coffee. Um, and again, this, if you, if you go to feel the, a good way to test your coffee and get used to kind of knowing your grind settings is to feel it. And this feels about like sea salt, like that chunky salt kind of texture. All right. So I'm just going to pour that right into my jar. All right. Got the coffee here. Now I'm going to add my filtered water. You want to use good filtered water if you have it. If you don't have a good water filtration kind of filter at home or something like that, um, you can get spring water and do like a 50-50 blend of spring water and tap water to get pretty decent water um, in most places unless you just have really terrible uh, water that's very hard and full of chlorine. Then you really need some kind of carbon filter or filtration system. Um, now you don't want to fill that all the way up to the top. So I left a little room there because the coffee is going to degas, it's going to expand. And if you fill it to the top and then put a lid on it, um, you're going to build up a lot of pressure in there. So leave a little headroom, so to speak. Um, you want to be sure that all the coffee gets saturated. Um, you don't want to over agitate. So you don't want to just shake this like crazy. But if there's some dry coffee at the top, I'll just kind of turn it over, shake a little bit and do that. I'm probably, I'm just going to loosen the lid. I'm not going to tighten the lid on it. I'm going to loosen it a little bit so that if pressure builds up, it can degas. But basically now I stick this in the fridge overnight, anywhere from eight to 12 hours, and then we can taste it, see how it turns out. Okay, so I'll leave this overnight. I'll come back tomorrow and we'll finish it off and I'll show you how to do that. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here we are, we got cold beer ready. All right, this has been chilling in the fridge for about 11, uh, 11, almost 12 hours now. So um, now we're gonna take this we're not going to shake it. A lot of people make the mistake now. They shake this up right before they go to filter it or strain it out. And you don't want to do that. Um, if you do that, you're going to end up adding a little extraction. And at this point, you're getting mainly bitter notes, things, uh, flavors in the coffee that you really uh, don't want at the end of the extraction. You end up over extracting the coffee if you shake it at this point. So don't shake it, just uh, get ready to strain it. I actually couldn't find my funnel, so I'm gonna cheat and use my Chemex. So I'm gonna put the filter right into the Chemex and just pour this in. Again, if you don't shake it, you shouldn't have too many grounds coming out until the very end. Um, so actually I'm gonna transfer this now my cold brew jar because that's what I want to store it in in the fridge. Um, so now I'm just going to pour the rest. Now we start to get big globs of grounds. And you can dump that in there. Um, so as you see I'm left with a bunch of grounds in the coffee. That's fine. I can just dump that out. Um, the mesh strainer you know catches the grounds. So I'm going to let that finish kind of draining there into my Chemex. Alright, so there we go. We got the cold brew. I filtered all this, uh, ran it through the fine mesh strainer, and now I just chill this in the fridge and grab it whenever I want. Now if you brew this at the right ratio, you end up with a, a stronger concoction, a little bit concentrated you might say. And you want it that way. You want it a little extra strong so that when you pour this over ice, um, if you do, most people would do that, pour this over ice. As the ice melts, it's going to balance out to about the right ratio. If you brew your coffee at normal strength and then you add it to ice later, as that ice melts, you just dilute the coffee and it ends up being weak and, and watery. Um, stick in the fridge. You got cold brew. There you go. Enjoy. We'll see you next time.